Hi everyone, it's KJ. Back in 2020, I graduated with an aerospace engineering degree from MIT and later on attended and dropped out of Stanford's aerospace grad school program. Today, I'm gonna be answering engineering related questions that people ask me on Instagram. This is Life Support. Deep Tanshu 33 asks, why did you choose to work as a software engineer and not take a role in aeronautical engineering? That's a really great question. I think I gave aerospace engineering a fair shot. I interned at an aerospace company twice in a row back in 2017 and back in 2018, did research in aerospace engineering in 2019, and I thought I was going to get a PhD in aerospace engineering. I also even worked for an aerospace startup, I guess we can call it an aerospace startup. It was an autonomous drone company where I worked on physical systems there. Ultimately, aerospace engineering was great for understanding entire systems, but I loved how fast paced software engineering was. I can iterate a lot faster, I can innovate a lot faster, and I didn't have any physical bottlenecks that I had to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. And, you know, the pay and the flexibility of being able to work from home, they helped a ton there in that decision as well. Stay tuned for the end of the video because I answer a question about how I actually transitioned between those fields because there's some nuances there that I want to talk about. Study with Sun asks, as an aerospace engineer who has just finished bachelor's, what do you recommend? I recommend you cast a wide net. I know aerospace engineering might sound specific at first, but there's so many different places that you can go as an aerospace engineer. You can work on physical systems as a dynamics engineer, which I've had experience with. You can go into research labs and work on actual fluid mechanics, for example. You can also work on autonomous systems where you're only working in just code. You're fundamentally a computer scientist. So I think at first you should just gravitate towards the specific jobs that that intrigue you and then further down the line don't be afraid to look elsewhere when you find something else that intrigues you you have a big toolkit of knowledge right now and keep exploring until you find what really motivates you and drives you and what your real passions are frenzy man 2024 asks interested in aerospace but sadly my university didn't have the course should i take mechie or mechatronics both i think are great alternatives for aerospace engineering i think mechanical engineering is probably as close as you're going to get to aerospace engineering minus the or mechanics and other space oriented stuff. Whereas mechatronics, I think is more closely related to robotics fields and different computer engineering fields and electrical engineering. If you attended to study aerospace engineering with the hopes of being robotics engineer somewhere down the line, then I think mechatronics will probably be your route because you'll get a better understanding of the code behind a physical system. But if you wanted to join aerospace engineering because you wanted to build broader systems and understand things like thermodynamics and fluid mechanics, mechanical engineering is the route that you should go for. Samna 1997 asks, how to develop interest in coding? For me, it's all about the projects, projects, projects because ultimately you don't even know what you don't know. You don't even know what parts of coding that you like or dislike, but going through projects yourself and actually deploying them will give you a lot of knowledge, a lot of experience, and just a lot of feedback for yourself on whether or not this is a field that you actually want to pursue. HeMan17 asks, should I learn software like SolidWorks and MATLAB early on? The short answer is yes. I got exposed to both of them fairly early on. I had to use uh, MATLAB for different optimization stuff in various problem sets throughout my aerospace engineering curriculum. And then I also had to use CAD whenever I needed to 3D print something for the research that I was doing at Stanford. I will also say that I was trying to get a mechanical engineering internship one of the summers at MIT and an Apple rep turned me away because I didn't know CAD. So long story short, yes, you should just get exposure to these as soon as possible. And there's no real downside to learning either of these. Ashria asks, what is the best engineering degree that allows you to work in robotics? So for this one, I think it depends on what level of the system that you actually want to be a part of. If you want the broader system, aerospace engineering is a pretty good robotics engineering field. Uh, you'll get to learn a lot about the system dynamics as a whole. You'll be able to get some sort of experience in the coding and any mechanics that happen in between. Uh, if you want to be in the weeds of the actual automation, of the actual autonomy aspects of these robots, then something like computer engineering or me mechatronics will probably be the best routes there because you'll do a ton of coding on your day-to-day -day basis if you got either job in those areas. And then 
if you want to actually be building the physical aspects of these robots, I think mechanical engineering is the way to go. Ankle Breaker 23 asks, have you worked on any projects in the field of propulsion or rocketry? So the furthest that I've gone personally in propulsion outside of the curriculum is building a water propelled rocket that was made out of one liter or empty one liter bottles that were put together and built to launch for distance. Beyond that, I don't really have too much experience, but I do have a friend that has a ridiculous amount of experience in that realm and was on Rocket Team. And I actually filmed a whole video about his process of building his own rocket engine. So you should go check that out on my channel. His name is Sam Austin. The Real Atriv asks, I would really like to learn more from you. Is it possible to do one-on-one? -on -one? When's the best for you? So I am actively recruiting for my one-on-one -on -one year long personal mentorship program called Aspire Mentors. So if that's something that interests you, go to aspirementors.tech slash apply and I'll have a call with you and see if you're a good fit for this program because I'm really just trying to hand select like-minded individuals who feel like their potential is right there and just needs to be unlocked with personal mentorship. And if you're someone who thinks that the time is right now to invest time and money into your future, I recommend you apply. Sri Lakshmi 1998 asks, can I become an astronaut by doing aerospace courses? Yeah, I think a ton of astronauts did study aerospace engineering in their undergrad. A lot of them either did, yeah, aerospace engineering or military or were pilots or some in a medical field. There's only a certain amount of astronauts every year. I think the cohort is 12. So you really have to frame your whole being as value that you could provide to any cohort of astronauts. So for example, I know people that studied aerospace engineering as an undergrad and then went into medical school to get their doctor's degree. And that is someone that has a lot of value because they can go up in space, understand the intricacies of that, and also treat anybody on board if something were to happen. So that's just a little example of like how you can become an astronaut. There's only a certain amount, so you really need to stand out. Cheese for Life asks, how can I mix engineering studies with business? So if you're really into business and really into engineering, I actually recommend to just go full force with your engineering degree because that will give you a ton of knowledge in problem solving and innovating and just understanding how systems work in general. And then as you go, maybe in undergrad, you can go into different business courses that you have the time in your schedule to, or you can have a side hustle that really just develops your business knowledge. For me, managing this YouTube channel got a lot of that entrepreneurial spirit going inside of me. And I also attended a good amount of MIT courses that talked about businesses and startups in general. So that's how I got my exposure for that. Prerona Kaushik asks, are subjects in mechanical engineering and aerospace engineering the same for a few semesters? For that, I think it really depends. It depends on the order at which any specific school teaches either of those two curriculum. And I will say a lot of the curriculum of mechanical engineering and aerospace engineering is similar. As I said, they're probably the two closest majors between aerospace engineering and any other major. So a lot of the physics, mechanics, fluid mechanics, thermodynamics, those types of classes, I think go hand in hand between subjects, but it really depends on the order at which the curriculums are taught at a specific school. Ramesios asks, would you ever want to work in any FANG company? At this current stage, no. I think I really love the fast pacedness of a startup and I love how quickly things iterate and the amount of personal growth I get having that type of big responsibility on a day-to-day -day basis. Needless to say, I do admire and really love those big tech companies. I mean, I love say Apple products or Google products. I'm a Google partner, for example, for Google Pixel. So I have nothing against the companies per se, but just at this stage in my life, I think I have the biggest upside and the biggest fulfillment by working in a startup. Mung Wiro John asks, which websites did you learn to code or which would you refer to a beginner? I would actually not recommend any specific website at all. I would just recommend you come up with a specific project because now that you have a project in mind and specific issues that you need to find answers for, you have a more targeted search approach for these different websites and for these different forums. You be able to know what to ask, what questions to look for, and those answers will be able to push you along further than I think just casting a wide net from the beginning and learning everything there is to coding before actually coding. Sohail Patel 15 asks, new follower here, what do you actually do for work? 
Yeah, so I do have multiple vlogs that go through my day-to-day, -day, but I'll try to give a fairly quick description of what I do. So I'm a senior software engineer on the client solutions team. The engineers on my team are on the front lines of the entire engineering org. So if anything goes wrong with the client or with a user, we look at them first and we figure out if there's any specific things that are going wrong and if we can solve them. And if not, then we'll have to escalate it over to our DevOps and infrastructure teams to tell them of a bigger issue that's happening or to uh, our platform team that works on the broader code base, but we have different clients and they each have their specific needs. And we also help them formulate the different functionality that they want in their specific bots. So we help them with getting their bots live in the first place also. Chill Egg asks, what is C++ used for in engineering other than game development? So with games, you understand that things need to move quickly and react quickly. And that's what makes a game a game, like interactable environment. And that's the same thing that goes with robotics. The robots need to take in sensor information and make decisions based on the information that they're coming in. So that needs to happen in real time. So similarly to how games need quick code to run, robots use C++ to do just that. It's one of the more real time coding languages out there right now. And that's why a lot of the robotics industry does use C++ with all of their code. Yash Kumar 6073 asks, I'm passionate about aerospace. Where can I learn the mechanics of it online? So as I mentioned to the person who asked about what they should do with their aerospace engineering degree, I think aerospace is so broad that you need to be able to cast a wide net. So here, just look at anything that's within the aerospace engineering industry and figure out a specific area that really intrigues you and just start diving in there. I wouldn't say to learn everything all at once, but instead say if fluid mechanics really interests you, look at a bunch of videos on fluid mechanics and increase your knowledge there. Alex Q. Clay asks, thoughts on SpaceX? I honestly think it's a cool company. I think it moves a lot faster than government agencies in terms of space. So I really admire them for that the amount of iteration that they're able to do, the fact that they're able to reland rocket boosters, it's just insane stuff. Uh, my friend Sam that I mentioned earlier that built his own rocket, he worked at SpaceX for a couple years. And from the stories that I hear from him, I wouldn't personally join SpaceX because of the tough workload and because of the long hours, but I can definitely see someone who wants to grow a lot in a short period of time and wants to challenge themselves in the aerospace engineering industry. SpaceX could be uh, the highlight of someone's career as well. So it just depends on what you're looking for. RG2067 asks, how was your transition from aerospace to software and what skills did you need for a software engineering job? So my transition started off with a ton of feeling like a complete imposter. So all those feelings of imposter syndrome just overwhelmed me because a lot of the lingo right off the bat, it's just lingo that you wouldn't understand unless that's part of your day-to-day -day life or if you studied computer science in the past, which I hadn't. So I felt felt like a fish out of water in the beginning. The biggest things that I really had to learn were around cloud distributed systems. So that's understanding API endpoints, what API even means theoretically, how distributed systems even work, the different servers involved, running different environments, whether it's locally or in the cloud in different environments like staging or production, those types of things are easy to learn on a job, but hard to get the grasp of unless you're in that specific headspace on a day-to-day -day basis. So that's all the questions you had today. Hopefully this was helpful for anyone that had engineering questions. If you want to be a part of a future video, make sure to follow me on Instagram and look out for stories where I ask you to ask me any questions on a specific topic. As always, stay positive, stay inspired, and I'll see you in the next one.